I didn't know what was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, he said he's going to be me. I'm going to be him. Just normal back and forth. But, you know, then whatever happened, happened. It just escalated. So it is what it is. Obviously, it's a fight, so. yeah. There's back and forth about who started it. But from your standpoint, what he pushed you first. I mean. Well, then what's the back and forth on that? Right? Yeah. Okay. From their side, I guess. So did he just call him a motherfucker or did he actually say something about his mother? Do I have a mom? I'm asking you. No. Where's she? She's dead. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that I did that? Well, that's Let's unpackage this for a second. Yeah. Do you think that I did that? Uh, probably not. But okay. So swim. I just feel like you guys are kind of asking rhetorical questions, though. You get what I'm saying? Like, well, we who started it? I mean, he, he went out there and you he You get said, what I'm saying? But yeah. let's ask some real questions. Because right. these so far, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be a dickhead or anything, but you get what I'm saying? Do you really think I did that? Well, he said that you did. Though. Okay. Okay. Just, right, I just wanted to give you a chance to clarify. But I'm asking if you think that. No, but I still have to okay. ask. So, no. Caleb, what's happening with the camp, obviously you're upset. Now this happens. How pissed off are you? Does it, does it mean, make you I'm, motivated? Does it make you just want I'm to go not any more motivated than I already was. I mean, how much more mo motivated do you have to be to win Undisputed Super Middleweight Championship? So... Um, I'm not any more motivated than I was, but um, I have a point to prove, and I'm going to prove it on November 6th. Do you think your eyes going to heal pretty Yeah, fast? it's just a scratch from my glasses. I have my glasses on, so when impact got made, it just left a scratch on it across the skin, and I didn't want it to be, you know what I'm saying, just tripping or nothing. Yeah. People have really not tried to get inside his head that much. Was that, was that something you noticed over the years that people have just kind of – Scared off from him, yeah, maybe pre yeah, yeah. pre fight. I mean, if you notice him. I mean, I think most guys go into the fight against him feeling like they're already going to lose. And um, my goal here today was not to overcompensate and go in the complete opposite direction. I just let him know I'm going to win. And then, you know, he motherfucker, you going, you know, he was saying the same thing to Boo Boo Andrew. I'm going to kick your ass, motherfucker. But if someone else says motherfucker to him, they're talking about his mom. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's the same shit that he said to Boo Boo Andrew, right? Motherfucker. 100%. So, but then all of a sudden when I say it, I'm talking about his mom. Mm -hmm. So, no, nah, that don't add up. Does that add up? No. Hey, with all the BS aside, as far as with what's happening and all that, in the ring, Canelo, what does he bring to the ring, style-wise? I don't care what he brings to the ring. I'm not focused on what he brings to the ring. I'm focused on what I bring to the ring. What will you do to, to be victorious? What will be the difference? The difference? I'm the better fighter. That's the difference. So November 6th, if you want to see the details, you guys make sure you tune in, and uh, it's going to be fireworks. It seems like you have an advantage in speed. We've seen guys use movement and stuff to kind of trouble them before. Um, what do you kind of do to make sure that you can kind of, are you guys doing anything different in camp, I guess, to make sure that you can kind of stay sharp in the second half of the fight and kind of not, you know, maybe make the kind of mistake that Saunders did? Mm, nothing no different than any other camp we've done. You know, we're not going to switch up everything we do for somebody. Again, we're focused on what we do and how we do things. So um, we don't switch everything up just because, you know, we're stepping up. You know, you don't start training like a world champion after you become a world champion. You start training like a world champion to become a world champion. And that's something I've done my whole career from my pro debut till now. And I haven't, I don't train any harder for bigger fights or little smaller fights. I give my craft my best ever every camp and that's what we're gonna do this camp. Do you think he's been a different fighter at 168 than he was lower? In what way? Do you, I mean, do you think there's any difference in the way he, you know, conducts himself or takes punches or punches at 168 than before? Mm, I mean, not that. The one thing that's never you've never shied away from, and you talked about it up there, is that that self confidence is going to carry you to victory in life. When was it in your life that you knew, like, if I can believe in something, it's going to manifest itself in reality? I mean, and then started at an age where I felt like, man, if I do believe in myself, then it will happen. It's just something that I've always done. I just always believed in it. It wasn't like, well, if you believe in it, then it'll happen. It's like, it's just a true belief that I have. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to, it's like, you know, everyone's saying that I'm talking all this shit, but he talked a lot of shit today too. But even before today, it's like, he think, he's talking all this shit, but what I, I, cause I feel like I'm going to win. Am I supposed to just come here and keep my fingers crossed and, Hope that I do well on fight night. You know, has any great that you've ever heard of, just keep their fingers crossed and hope that they do good and we'll see the outcome or do they tell you what they're gonna go out and do and hold themselves to that standard and go out and do it. And I think, I'm a winner, yeah. I'm a winner. That's why I'm here. My whole life, I've conquered things way bigger than boxing.
things that would chew him up and spit him out. And any of you as well. And I come out with it with my chin up. I'm a winner. That's what I do as I win. So watch and see. I think the other thing that's in play is that, you know, like uh, you mentioned it, other guys may have shied away from the issue of Oscar Valdez and the Eddie Reynoso GIF, but you chose to say what you said. That's a byproduct of the confidence that you have and the fact that you're going to say what's on your mind and not be, not be muzzled, not be edited in any way, right? No, if you feel something in your heart, you should say it. If you truly believe in it, and um, you should say it out loud because if you continue to silence your inner warrior, you know, eventually that word will just fade away. Does the way he reacted to that tell you anything? It seemed like he was roid, roid raging to me, you know. So, I don't know. I think the roids are starting to get to him. I don't know what it's doing. How much thought went into uh, wanting to fight at this level, the super middleweight level? How much of that made your decision to finally go there? Uh, ask me one more time. How much thought did you have to take to make a decision to go up to the super middleweight level? He's always been a super middleweight. Yeah, I've always been a super middleweight yeah, since my Canelo. I mean, I mean, we were here first. Yeah, we've been a super he moved middleweight. Up, He's always moved up. So, I mean, I've been at this weight since my pro debut. My so, and uh, I won the Golden Glove Nationals at 178. So, you know, I've been at this weight for a long time. Okay, you, you talk about your humble boxing origins in Nashville. Uh, what was your inspiration? Who you grew up looking at? Um, well, like I said, there wasn't really a boxing community where I'm from, so I, I didn't get to see that firsthand. It's just what I seen on YouTube and, you know, my dad when I first started and then later on when we got with Justin. But growing up, you know, people like uh, James Tony and Roy Jones and, you know, even uh, Hector Camacho and Terry Norris and uh, Georgie Benton and, I mean, it goes, to, it goes on and on and on. Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, just people that I really looked up to. And you know, I, but even when um, I was at my lowest, at my worst point, I never wanted to be them guys. I just wanted to take certain parts, certain certain things that they did, and, and put them into my own. And what was the moment when you really thought that I can make it like a real boxer? Like, what was the moment, the key moment for you in your career? When I first started. You first fight. When I was nine years old, I said, this is what I'm going to be. I told you, I never wanted to be an astronaut. I didn't want to be no teacher, no firefighter. I wanted to be a fighter, and that's it. What was the first big arena event fight that you attended, either as a boxer or a spectator? Last question, guys. My, uh, Thank you. my second fight, I fought a national champion. My third fight, I went to Orlando and fought a multi-time national champion. And like I said, my dad stuck me in the fire early and made me stand there. And, you know, I can remember me being the number one seed at a tournament and uh, my dad going to the commission the night before and pulled me as the number one seed and put me as the last seed and saying, if my son wants to win this tournament, then he's got to fight every day. He don't get no five. So, I mean, he, he put me in there early. Caleb, Sorry. boxing's nice. been yeah. taking a lot of criticism. Sure. What does this fight represent for boxing, man? Boxing's first undisputed super middleweight. History. History. All right. Thank you. Thank you.